Hi everyone, welcome to episode 82 of Wool and Spinning. My name is Rachel and I can be found pretty much everywhere as well for pearls. Thank you for joining me today. This is going to be a quite a short show. This isn't going to be a regular um, show. I was supposed to live stream the show this afternoon and I was had it all set up. I've got pages and pages and pages of notes to share with you. And I've actually been sick in bed for most of the week. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we've had gastro go through our house and everybody's been sick and not feeling well. I was just moving some wool around and like um, getting a whole bunch of stuff out and putting some things away and I think the wool like got into my um, like into my throat and my nose and stuff because I just feel really tickly all of a sudden. Um, yeah, so we've been really sick and I've postponed the live stream till next week. So this month there will actually be three shows that come out, but I didn't want to delay another week before a podcast came out because I really wanted to review Alana Wilcox's new book, A New Spin on Color. It's self-published and she's been really trying to get the word out there and I've seen a little bit of buzz about it on Instagram and in other podcasts and I really wanted to get that review out for her because it's a great book and I really hope that you guys will check it out. So we're actually going to finish the show off with that quick review today. Um, and I show a little bit of what the book looks like inside um, just by scrolling through really quickly. And I hope that you guys enjoy a bit of a sneak peek because it's really unusual that you get to see um, a little bit of a book before you purchase it. I would really recommend if you're particularly if you're a newer spinner or a, a sort of beginning to intermediate spinner and you're wondering about how to manage um, some of your color techniques in your spinning, I'd highly recommend her book. Um, I do have one project that I've been working on this week and I thought I would share it quickly and I'm not going to do an answer anything today or anything. I, it's just going to be a super quick and dirty show, 10 minutes long and, um, and then I'll see you next week for a long proper show on the live stream. So um, I have been working on something. This is, uh, it's been in my stash for about a year. Um, it's Superwash Targi. I don't generally buy a lot of um, Superwash anymore, but this is from Kinfolk Yarn and Fiber. She's local to me and she's wonderful. Um, she's Etsy, she's on Etsy as Kinfolk Yarn and Fiber and it's spelt the Canadian slash British way, F-I-B-R-E for fiber. And this is in her colorway Agate and she had posted this on Instagram a year ago and I had asked her if she could hold a couple of braids for me and then I um, have sort of kept them ever since. So I've got eight ounces of this. I stripped them down into, oh, I think I must have stripped the braid like 18, well, there's two, four, six, eight left. So I think I must have stripped it like 16 times. And I've just been spinning it um, end to end, short forward, um, a worsted draft. I'm halfway through the first four ounces. This is on my Lendrum. And I've just been spinning it um, when I can in the evenings for five minutes, just doing like a bundle. Um, and over time, I'm hoping that I'll have enough. I'm, I'm, I didn't do a control card. I did. I broke all of my rules. I didn't sample. I didn't do anything. I'm just spinning a two ply. Um, I'm gonna put quite a bit of ply twist into the. Um, uh, when I ply it, I'm gonna put quite a bit of ply twist in it and really um, tighten up the the yarn quite a bit because it's super washed. It can take a lot of twist. And then eventually, I'm actually hoping to just do a, a plain blanket shawl. Nothing special. I just love these colors so much, and. Um, I just really wanted to show them off in something relatively plain. There will be lots of barber pole in the yarn. There will be a little bit of striping. It's just going to be really pleasant. And I'm looking forward to um, having that finished. I have the whole other four ounces still to strip down and to spin. I'm going to spin um, the one four ounces that set of bobbins will get set aside. The other four ounces that set of bobbins will be set aside and then I'll apply them together so that I can mix up the colors a little bit more rather than worrying that one braid was um, dyed maybe ever so slightly differently than the other braid. They'll be totally mixed up together. So um, I'm hoping that if I um, can continue to work on these singles over the next couple of weeks that maybe by December I'll have them plied up and I'm hoping that it'll be my project that I take with me when we go away at Christmas time because I'm only going to take one project this year and if it gets done it gets done and if not I'm not going to worry about it so I'm hoping that that yarn will be done and I'll be able to cast it on. I still need to work on my Spin the Bin project. Um, spin the Bin is something I've been working on for 2017. I still have three um, four ounce braids to spin for it. And uh, December 31st is the end of Spin the Bin for 2017. And I really wanna get those last two, 
three spins done. So fingers crossed, um, I need to get those started because I really want to get that um, full bin done. I don't think I'm going to do another one for 2018, but it was really nice to do it for 2017 because um, I did one in 2016 and I've done one for 2017. So I'll reassess for next year, but I'm almost done my bin and I've got some projects that I'm ready to cast on with those those um, yarns that I've spun. But I really wanted to spin the entire bin before I started anything because I wanted to photograph all of the finished yarn all together. And as you know, I haven't really been spinning a ton, a ton. So that'll be a project coming up um, for the next couple of weeks to really bang it out, get, get that stuff finished. Um, that's all that I'm working. I'm still working on my Cory, my Romney um, mohair cross from Disdero Farms. I'm not going to show it today because I'll talk about it quite a bit next time on, on the next um, episode. Um, for those who are Patreon subscribers, please stay tuned for more on the live stream for next week. So it'll be next Thursday at 1230 um, Pacific Standard Time. And I'll send you the link and everything before we go live so that you know where to join us. If you're watching on a computer or on a desktop, you can probably get into the live chat. I think on tablets, you should be able to have access to the live chat as well. But I think when you're truly mobile, like on a cell phone, you won't be able to do the live chat, but that's okay. Um, I keep an eye on the Slack channel at the same time while I'm doing the live stream. So if you're messaging in the Slack channel, I can usually see that as well. So I look forward to seeing all of you guys next week. And in the meantime, enjoy the book review from Alan, um, of Alana's book. I seriously hope that you uh, check that out. And until next time, happy spinning. Bye guys. There have been many people online and particularly on Instagram is where I have seen it that people have been chatting about Alana Wilcox's new book. She has 100% self-published this book which is amazing and is um, a huge testimony to somebody's work ethic and just their stick to itness with a project. So well done Alana. Um, the book is called A New Spin on Color and um, she talks a lot on the show about striping in hand spun yarns. She goes into an incredible amount of detail about how to manipulate the yarn in hand painted top to achieve the results you desire and that you like. She gives you a few different ideas about different approaches to managing stripes that will appeal to everyone. For example, um, she suggests that combing overlapping colors together to create subtler color transitions will work when you want to transition between colors, which I thought was brilliant. Um, that could be in the case of a gradient or it might be in the case of a yarn where the color transitions are just too stark. Um, and she includes multiple swatches that she works up in her hand spun. So she doesn't just show the knitted swatches, which can be really super valuable, particularly when you're looking at various ways of spinning the same swatch, uh, sorry, the same braid of yarn, but um, braid of fiber, sorry. But um, it's nice to see uh, crocheted swatches, woven swatches, and she even has a couple of needle point swatches that she shows. So this is the uh, cover of the book. And I'm just going to see if I can click a little bit and see if I can show you um, the book is actually a compilation of her work that has been over four years for her to complete and um, she actually writes in the introduction that she was working on her master spinner at the time and she wanted to um, basically document uh, what she was learning and some of the different things that she had uh, come across while she was um, doing her her course so um, which I thought was really um, really amazing and actually a really awesome way to uh, document such an amazing um, four years of, of learning so she, there's a whole bunch of stuff here I'm gonna go through really really quick because I don't want to wreck the book and I don't want anybody to feel like I'm spoiling the book um, one of the things that I thought was really interesting, I'm just going to go to our table of contents. The first part of the book is on color management and how to manipulate all these different um, hand painted braids. And then she goes into quite a bit around um, blending color and then also creating solid colors. She does a lot of spinning um, techniques. So she talks about how to actually approach the comb top. So how to, um, you know, work with it, how to approach it, what you're maybe looking for. And then she goes into um, how to create some of these different ways of manipulating the color and how you maybe would um, 
manipulate the color to create something in particular that you're looking for. The photography in this book is incredible. Um, she has a tutorial here about how to spin across the top and what that actually looks like, which I think is awesome. I don't want to spoil her too much of the book because I think that this is a, it's a great book for anybody who's um, a beginning spinner, wants to learn more, is maybe having some issues around color muddying and is having difficulty sorting through all of that. Um, a lot of these techniques and whatnot that she gives you are things that spinners pick up over a long period of time. And she's kind of giving you all of the information right up front and saying, look, this is how you can get the results that you're looking for that you may be feeling like you're not getting just yet. So I definitely think it's something to look into. I will put links in the show notes for you so that you can have a look and see what you think. Um, Alana's put a huge amount of work into this. The photography is awesome. Um, it's clear, it's well written, it's concise. And uh, I really liked a lot of her ideas. I liked some of the things that she had to say about around how to manage the color and how to create different uh, striping techniques in particular. And then towards the end, how to create certain um, uh, different tones in your yarn. So how to create those really blended muted colors versus those really crisp, uh, bright colors, which I thought was awesome. I'd really like to try some of the techniques that she outlines and reflect back on those over the next few months. But in the meantime, I'd really highly recommend that you check it out. It's available in, in a ebook online and also in hardcover. And like I said, she is self-published. So this is a huge feat and uh, well done, Alana. I think this is just an awesome book.